guys, it's Danny. I hope you all are doing well today. It is time to let orchids just brighten our days. Now, when we're all kind of confined to our homes, we can always turn to our orchids to help us get through this. That's exactly what we shall do today because we're gonna do something we don't typically do here on this channel. And this is look at some flower spikes, some buds, even some flowers, some things that just make my day brighter. And I hope you will enjoy this video too. Maybe you're gonna put something on your wish list. So just sit tight, grab a snack, grab a beverage if you will, and let's just look at some orchids. First, let's look at some slipper orchids and I brought here the three slipper orchids or Paphiopetalums which have flower spikes at the moment and they are so exciting because I've never seen these guys in bloom. They are first time bloomers and that's always exciting to see. Can you believe that just a couple of years ago I had such major issues with these model leafed Paphiopetalums and leaf tip dieback and all of that crazy stuff with inorganic yeah, sadly, as much as I so wanted that setup to work, it didn't. And these guys were the most affected out of all of my orchids. Well, fast forward a couple of years later and here we are. Foliage looking great, flower spikes on the way. So let's just take them one by one and I'll put the names of all of these orchids on the screen down below in a nice little tag. So first of all, this is Paphiopetalum American Beauty. This was sent to me by Jessica a long time ago, maybe a year or a year and a half ago. And in the meantime, it has grown. And as you can see, it has a flower spike, but it's not the only one. Here in the back, the second fan has a flower spike as well. It's just not as tall, but it's there. Now, you might also notice some yellow leaves and also brown leaves. And let me get you a better view. Well, those are normal. This is actually the oldest growth on this orchid. Can you see? It's the middle growth, which is just withering away now. Paphiopetalums, even though they kind of look a little bit like Phalaenopsis, they're not monopodial, they're sympodial. And all of these fans, after they're done blooming, they will never bloom again. They produce terminal flower spikes, but this is normal in their case. And after the flowering gets done, new fans will appear just like new pseudobulbs on cattleyas or on cidiums. And the old fans are slowly and surely withering off. And all of this energy is transferred to the new growths. So in the end, it is absolutely fine to cut away these leaves. They don't actually segment or come off just as easy as Phalaenopsis or other orchids. So in this case, you can actually cut them off, but I prefer to let them draw out all the energy these new growths need. And then when the leaf is completely gone, that's when I cut it. Slightly unsightly, I know, but I think it's better for the plant. And I do believe that the flower, oh my goodness, now that I see it on camera, in this beautiful close-up, it looks so elegant. It looks like a black swan. I think it's going to be a vinegar color or darker colored flower. We'll see how it looks like. But isn't it just elegant? I love, Maya loves it too. I love this dark, dark color. Dark colored orchids or almost black colored orchids are very, very, very hard to find. So all the more special when I get something like this. Next, an orchid that I purchased myself, I do believe off of eBay. Oh, this is the path that I really don't want to pronounce the name of, Paphiopetalum. Okay, I'm gonna humor you. Wen Shinense? Mm, I don't think that was correct. But anyway, we have a little bud sprouting here as well. This is a type of Paphiopetalum that grows excruciatingly slow. I purchased this one when it was almost mature and this was a year and a half ago. So it grows very, very slow. I think it's the slowest of my paths, which makes me so curious about the flower. I will have to Google this guy again or hmm, maybe I won't. I'm gonna keep it a surprise because I'm obviously not remembering anything about this orchid and how it looked like. So I'm not even gonna Google it and it's going to be a surprise for all of us. And the last little path, this one is easier to pronounce. It's Paphiopetalum Vanda M. Pearman. Again, I don't remember how this one is supposed to look like. We're just gonna have to wait and see. But as you can see, the flower spike is really tiny, very obvious, but it will take, I think, a couple of months until the flower will finally open. So fingers crossed, nothing happens to the flower spike. That would be a shame. Being that this is the very first blooming of the sore kit, it could happen. First bloomings are always a little tricky, but let's just hope nothing will happen. The mother plant has a wonderful pattern on the leaves. This one grows pretty fast and 
and the leaves are pretty large as you can see I wasn't expecting it to actually grow this large and this is one of those paths which doesn't have a glossy leaf it looks like it has some sort of striations on the leaf very very nice to look at it really is matte so let's put these guys side by side so you can see what I mean there you go I think you can tell that this guy is really glossy and this one absolutely not Paps are very interesting little orchids. Next up, here are some more first-time bloomers. This is a dendrobium. It's the Jenkinsi crust with aggregatum. Oh boy. But this one, I initially put it outside to get a chill down and then it got a little bit cold and I got a little scared. I put it inside and then it got a little bit warmer so I put it outside again. And then I decided that it's not gonna bloom this year so I just put it inside in the growth space. And look at here, we have a little flower spike just here. Let me zoom you in because it really is very, very tiny. So I just noticed this guy and I looked a little bit at the other pseudobulbs. I don't see any more flower spikes, which means I did a halfway good job. I think I should have left this guy outside a little bit more. I got a little scared because I didn't want him to freeze, although we don't have freezing conditions here, but together with strong winds, the temperature can feel colder than it actually is. So I was a little bit afraid, but I think next year I'll just power through. I'm gonna leave him outside. Cymbidiums did great outside, so if they're okay, this guy should be okay as well. But I think we're gonna have a little flower spike this year, just a little teaser for next year probably, but I'm just as excited. I think I will do a better job next year though. Can you see the next flower spike? I bet you you can't. This is the Engracum didieri. It's a miniature Engracum. I have quite a lot of those, not only big Engracums. Can you spot the flower spike? I can show it to you, it's right here. And now let's zoom in. Now granted, this can be a cakey as well, but I hope not. This guy is kind of tiny to have a cakey, but I think the proper size for a flower spike. So it is definitely not a root. You can see further down how a root looks like. This is green, so I think it's a flower spike, which is amazing because I'm really looking forward for my tiny dendrobiums to start blooming as well. They are supposed to be really nicely fragrant as well. And really honestly, I just like tiny orchids with tiny compact flowers. So let's just collectively make a wish and wish that this is not a cakey because I really want to make a video on the smaller Engracums as well. Some care tips as well for them because they are awesome little orchid species to have if you don't have a lot of space. But you know, I cannot really make a care tips video without at least having a flower because it just looks a little unprofessional and not genuine, doesn't it? So yeah, the sooner I get a flower, the faster I can make the care tips. I can definitely tell you how to keep them alive, but it would be fun to actually have a flower as well. Next up, here we have an orchid already in bloom. This is a Tilumnia. I missed Tilumnia flowers. It is the Gyrac Firm White. I got these Tulumnias just a few months ago, I think at the beginning of the year. I got myself a few Tulumnias to regrow my Tulumnia collection. And this one arrived with a tiny flower spike, which bloomed finally. And oh boy, if you know me, you know that I like contrast. I think it's the most beautiful thing in the world, on flowers at least, rather than just a solid color, which can be beautiful as well. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. I like contrast. And what can be better than a almost black and white contrast? Now, given this is not black. As I was saying, black on an orchid is kind of impossible. I will share with you down below a link to my Moniorara Millennium Magic in Bloom, which looks very black, but it actually is a very dark purple. So the next best thing is this very dark brownie purple, which this Tulumnia has. And when you put it in a contrast with white, which is the lightest you can go, then it absolutely looks black, right? I love to bits this little dotting on the lip. It has the typical Tulumnia shape to it, and I don't see any other coloring on the lip, no pink, nothing of the sorts, which is great. We'll see how the secondary branch will bloom. Can we see I have a secondary branch here? Tulumnias typically produce secondary branches, but in my experience, with at least two of them, I had different looking blooms on the branches. So that's an added bonus to Tulumnias, but yeah, just look at it. And together with the green of the foliage, it looks out of this world, doesn't it? I'm hoping the camera does it justice. Excuse Joey, she's actually taking a bath. 
So yeah, it just looks out of this world. I'm so used to pinks, reds and oranges now because I collected so many orange and red orchids that when I see something like this, which is arguably kind of minimalistic, it's just so awesome. There is no strong coloring here. It's pretty monochromatic, if you will, and it just works. It's amazing. I'm so in love with this Tulumia. Next, some more flower spikes. This is actually pretty cute. So what I have here is potentially a family of related orchids. So this in the back right here is the Princess Jackie, which I think I've discovered an ID for 99% sure, can never be sure without a tag. About a year and a half ago, I found an orchid without blooms in a flower shop. I looked a little bit at the foliage and I said, oh, you know what, this is Princess Jackie, I'm gonna buy it to give it away. But of course, being that it didn't have blooms, I didn't know for sure, so I'm waiting for it to bloom, to be sure. In the meantime though, this orchid grew so, so, so tall that it really does not look like a Princess Jackie. It has very, very slender canes. Can we see that? And the Princess Jackie has a bit of a plumper shape to the cane. So is it the same thing? I don't know. It's going to be very exciting to see, but they are blooming at the same time. And not only they're blooming at the same time, but here I have the Cattleya Harrisoniana alba which is an ICU orchid. So this one actually looks a little bit like the Princess Jackie, but is it? I don't know, we're gonna see when it finally blooms, we're gonna detect if the fragrance is the same, so I will pronounce myself then. Until then though, it's funny that all three orchids are blooming at the same time. So are they the same hybrid? Maybe not, but are they related? Hmm, I think they are. Next up, an orchid that again, just makes my heart happy. Look at this color. This is the No ID Golden Cat Lad that I got last year. It's the Cat Lad that had its pseudobulbs cut. We can still see remnants of that all throughout the orchid, but slowly and surely she's recovering. This year, only one pseudobulb is blooming, although she has quite a few new ones which we can see here. These ones decided not to bloom, but it's okay. This was a pretty stressed orchid. Yeah, I'm not complaining. I got one set of blooms and aren't they just gorgeous. I particularly love this little, oh my goodness, my camera went berserk. This is the type of color which is so saturated that my camera just doesn't really know what to do with it and it shows it a little different than it actually is. It is golden, but it's not very red orange. So, hmm, let me try to do something. Let's see, maybe something like this. The leaves, the foliage is now slightly blue. My hand has a blue tint, but the flower actually looks a little bit more realistic. I think, at least in the viewfinder. So yeah, no matter how good cameras get, they do have some colors, particularly on the texture of a flower, which they simply don't get along with. So right now, the leaves don't look like reality, but I think the flowers look a little bit more realistic. Anyway, I haven't been able to find an ID for this orchid. It's also not fragrant. It looks a lot like a Lelia hybrid. So I am investigating Lelia hybrids in the hopes that I will find something similar. I especially love this little red border on the lip here. But if you guys have any idea, do let me know in a comment down below. I would love to have an ID for this one. And considering how huge the orchid is, I'm pretty sure she will be a specimen very soon. Oh, I really don't like this blue hint. Much better. <laughs> so the flowers are overly saturated now, but at least the foliage looks natural. One thing that I'm noticing with this orchid is on this side, there is new growth sprouting and this one, let's say, still fits in the pot, but there is one right here, which does not look like it will fit. So I'm considering repotting this orchid into an even larger pot. She is already a large girl and I do not want to divide her because just imagine how beautiful she will be, a really beautiful specimen. But yeah, I think I need to consider bigger pots, maybe pots that are not transparent. The larger you go, the harder it is to find transparent pots. And what I'm looking for are pots which are not very tall, but rather shallow and just wide. So I might just find a container or a normal gardening pot and go for it. Just give up the idea of looking at the roots because with some cattleyas you just can't. There are no transparent containers to fit them. Oh right, now for two orchids that most probably you didn't know I had because I didn't know either. So first of all, 
this beautiful purple mini phalaenopsis. I could swear I didn't purchase this. Maybe I got it at a discount, I wanted to save it, maybe I used it in a project and I got it without flowers. I swear I do not remember purchasing this one. And I looked a little bit through my video archive and I cannot find anything about it. So I don't know how this got into my collection, but I'm really happy it did. Yes, it's purple, but look how many flowers it has and still has a few buds to open. It is such a branchy little orchid, a multiflora, and I really, really like it. I can get past the fact that it's purple. Imagine if she were yellow, now that's pretty. But anyway, I digress. I am so, so happy I have it. And looking at it, doesn't it actually look like Zuma's Pixie? I'm not sure if that's the one. It might just be a different hybrid, but yeah, it's a multi-floral, which has beautiful branchy flower spikes, creates a lot of little flowers. And when it comes to Phalaenopsis, I will make a separate video showing you my Phalaenopsis shelf. When it comes to fowls, I have a funny suspicions that I will start to give away the big fowls that I have with the exception of a few, of course, and just focus on these tiny little fowls because they just fit my shelf and they make me happier. They're just so nice. So that was one of the orchids that I really didn't know I had. And the second orchid I didn't know I had is this one. And that's because it's not supposed to look like this, I guess. So this is Phalaenopsis sogo Euclidean variety or V3 crossed with everything you see here. I'll put a tag down below. I got this from Orchids Deluxe and the advertised picture was the one you see on the screen. Now, I thought at the time that this was a Mary clone. It's not. This looks nothing like that. It has a big lip, but mm, no, far from what it should be. I'm guessing these orchids were obtained by seed and seeds don't actually turn out to look identical to one another. And sometimes we can have good looking, let's say anomalies. And sometimes, I don't know, questionable looking anomalies. I don't know how to feel about this one. It's kind of pretty but it has that purple that I really don't like. This is the purple that I don't like. It's a dark, cold purple. If it were any other color, I think I would have been okay with it. It looks spectacular, but really my hope is that the next flowerings will not look like this. They might stabilize. This is the first time this orchid blooms. So I think I will keep it one more year and see how it blooms next year. If it's still the same, then one of you guys will be very happy to have it because I'm not keeping it. So yeah, sadly, this was the orchid I was looking forward to the most from that order that I did back then, but it was not meant to be for me. It might be for one of you. And the last little orchid we're gonna look at is yet another Phalaenopsis, but this one is not a disappointment. This one you guys don't know, but I did because I ordered it a few months ago, I think. I just didn't have a chance to show it off. This is Phalaenopsis Bronze Maiden. And I first saw this orchid in a different YouTube video. I don't remember from who. I'll link you to it down below in the description if I find it. But yeah, I saw it in a different video and I fell in love with it. So when I saw it for sale, I ordered it. Now this one does not look exactly like the one I saw in that video. Again, probably we're dealing with seedlings here, not clones. When we clone orchids, we get an identical copy of the mother plant. But when we obtain them from seed, even if we cross together the same parents, the seedlings will just not look identical. But even so, I really, really like the one that I have because mine actually has broader petals and sepals. The one I saw in the video had kind of slender petals and sepals. I was in love with the color. One thing I liked a little bit more on that one was the lip because it was almost white. Mine has white, but also a little pink. Anyway, these are just details. I really, really, really like this orchid. I like the color. It's a very nice blush, peachy pink. It's not a very vibrant color. It's more of a muted pink. Looks a little bit like what they call millennial pink or something like that, which I like. Hmm, maybe I do fall in that stereotype. Whatever, I like the color and I was actually mesmerized by the color, not the shape of the bloom. When it comes to fragrance, it does have something, but not a whole lot. So I will not call it fragrant, but oh my, how beautiful are the flowers. I really, really like them. And the flowers are not the only things that are nice about the sore kid. The foliage is rather special as well. 
can we see? I've seen individuals with even more silvery or gray leaves. So it really depends on the hybrid. I might do something and get another one that looks a little bit different foliage wise. Just for the fun of it, it might be a newer hybrid, so there might be a few varieties on the market until growers settle on one that looks more appealing to them. So I guess tis the time to stock up on the Bronze Maiden, because in a few years, maybe we will not find all of these varieties. Maybe the general market will prefer a different one. Now, sadly, you guys know I'm dealing with a bit of a thrip infestation, which I'm keeping under control, but this one was affected. You can see I lost a few buds on this flower spike. I only have two more buds. This one will open, this one, I hope so, fingers crossed, but I lost two or three buds, which is a shame but there's always next year. I'm keeping things under control, but that's why some buds are missing here. Oh, I'm just noticing, I think there's another branch forming here, possibly because of the bud loss. And that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you were entertained and don't worry about the video schedule. Things are kind of bad when it comes to this platform at the moment. I'm not gonna lie, it has been affected, but it's okay. Good things are happening as well, as you will see in future videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will go ahead and repeat what I think authorities are repeating at the moment all throughout this world. Stay at home as much as possible. Protect your health as well as the health of your loved ones because it's not only about us here, it's about the people around us as well, which might not be as strong as us. It's about our parents, our grandparents, you know? So keep everybody in mind and do please listen to what the authorities are saying because it really isn't the benefit of all of us. So with that said, Stay tuned for future videos and you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, experiments and other fun orchid subjects. Check out my second channel Miss Orchid Girl 2 for all sorts of other types of videos and also follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well. It's always great to keep in touch there as well and with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!